Well, hey there, folks, and welcome back once again to the Hop House. It's Eddie here, and we're doing another beer review, uh, another slightly scary higher ABV beer review. If you just found us here on YouTube, then go on, give us that thumbs up, give us a like, share, subscribe to this channel. It's the Hop House. We like hoppy beer, we like good house music. So I've been going through my beer stash, picking out some of the beers that I've had the longest, and I'm thinking, really need to get them reviewed. So. This beer is actually not a virgin beer review. I have had this beer before and I think I picked it by mistake because I, I wanted to virgin beer review it and I didn't so I had to go back and get another can. You ready to see what we're going to review? Yeah? Okay, so this is from Morrison's. This is where I picked it up. It's still available in Morrison's now so we are November 2021 but I think I may have had this can Ooh, probably about April time maybe? April, May? I bought this can, so I've had it a good few months. I'll show you what it is. From Salt Beer Factory. And it's one of the biggies. It's Tram. It's a double Nipah, double New England IPA. And if you have a look at that, if it picks it up, it is a whopping 8% ABV. Now, I'll be honest with you, before I did this, I did the um, double IPA from 4Pure, which was 8.3. I actually thought this was 8.5, so I thought I was doing the 4Pure, which was the strongest first. Uh, sorry, the weakest first, and I thought this was stronger. It's not. It's slightly below. But it's a double New England IPA. Uh, £3.50 this cost from Morrison's. Still available in there now. And if you know me, Salt Beer Factory, they're owned by Osset Brewery. They're based in Saltaire, which was originally a textile factory, and all their beers, like this is called Tram, is actually textile terms. So they're going, going back to the roots. Similar branding, you've got the sort of hexagon shape all around. Apart from that weird one they put out into Asda called The Hop, which again is going back to the roots because their bars used to be called The Hop prior to being salt beer factory. Oh, it was the, it was the Hop owned by Osset. Right, should we get it on the glass? We've got the Mrs. Gin glass for this because it's really good for the jigging, the swelling, and the jigging and the whiffing. Right. Oh, that didn't want to open then, nearly. Almost. Good. Whoa, quite a lot of CO2 release on the can opening. Crikey, it's still going. This may be quite lively. And then your beer in the glass. New England IPA, we've done tons of them on the channel, so you expect it to be hazy, cloudy, not see-through at all, trying to get ahead. Not much of one, but we have floaters, people. As murky... As hazy and murky as that is, I really did see some floaters. They're sort of there. If the camera will pick that up, I don't think it will. Oh my goodness, there's quite a lot of them in here. It's it's sediment season. It's floaters galore. Look at that. Ignore the red hue at the bottom of the glass. That's just the colour of the glass. But that is what you'd expect from a New England IPA. It's sort of yellowy to orange, boring on a custard colour. With a bit of a white head on it. I'm just going to jig it about a bit more. See if we can get a bit more of that head going. I don't want to spill it. We'll do a bit more laser vision a bit later on in the video. But that looks tremendous. Look at it. It's it's like a bowl of juice. It's like a smoothie. That's a custard anyone. Yeah, I like that. Not much of a white head going on. But I'm, I'm sure I can rejig and, and get the head going at once we've sampled it a little bit but yeah in terms of in terms of looks can't fault it that is juicy it's a juice bomb baby new england ipas go you know go check out the channel but if you are new i'll just quickly run through this because i don't want to bore, bore people to tears if they're regular viewers but also if you're new and you don't really know that much about beer and you're just getting into it then i want to just give you a little bit of what i know trust me it's not much it's not much but i know bits Right, New England, east coast of America, above New York. So all those states like Boston, uh, Massachusetts, Vermont, Connecticut, Rhode Island, um, Portland, Maine. There's a hell of a lot of breweries out that way. And it's known as New England because that's where the people from the UK first went over and settled. And they have their own style of, of American IPA. So they've, they've revolutionised... Americans revolutionised the IPA anyway. The British invented it. Indian Pale Ale. It was a strong beer, heavily hopped, so it could go from the UK. Right, 
out to sea in the boats over to troops in India when we had the Empire. Americans have this fantastic hop harvest every year. They've got a, a warmer climate than us, so their hops are a lot more fruity and juicy uh, or pithy. West Coast of America is where the, the hop growing started and the American IPAs kicked off. Your sea hops, we've run through them loads of times. Five sea hops, Cascade, Centennial, Columbus, Citra, and Chinook. And they are the one, there's other ones as well like Amarillo, Mosaic, Mosaic is a great favorite of mine, and newer hops like Sabro and Idaho 7. But usually they bring about fruitiness, um, your Cascade and your Mosaic and your Simcoe, which is another one, Simcoe, excuse me, they bring about some pine needle as well. Really bitty, bitty, bitter aftertaste. And that's West Coast of America style, or the way you're looking at it, West Coast. Um, so California and above, and that's really bitter and hoppy. Over the other side, New England, East Coast of America, what they do is they, they brew beers to specifically look murky and hazy like this. So if you're a traditionalist, you're not going to like it. You're going to think, what the hell? You know, that's going to give you bad guts. It's not. What they do is when they add the malted barley in, they also add oats in. So it thickens it up and it makes it juicy and look like a fruit juice or a cocktail with a bit of a white head on it. And it's really murky and juicy. And in terms of the hop content, there's still all those lovely American hops that are still mainly brewed over, sorry, looking at it your way, brewed over the West Coast areas. But instead of adding them when they boil the beer in the boil kettle in the, in the mash tun, they go ahead and they add it in the fermenter at the end of the process. So and it, it just gives it a different level of flavor. So basically it's thicker, murkier, juicier looking, and because it's dry hopped at the end of the brewing process, it gives you sweeter tropical fruits. So mangoes, peaches, stone fruits, sweet tangerine or nectarine orange. Um, you still get your citrus, lemon and lime and grapefruit, but it's sort of in the background if it's there at all. There's not much bitterness in these. It's all about juice bombs through the middle of the mouth, the sweetness and the the, the tartness and the zestiness from the hops hits you at the side of the tongue in the middle at the same time. So that's that's New England IPA uh, basically explained. Right then, should we give it a whiff see what we can sniff? We're after tropical fruit flavors, people. Oh, and they're there. That smells like I've just ordered a mango, an orange smoothie. That reminds uh, that makes me feel like I'm back in summertime, and it's November, and it's cold outside. But it's not cold in this glass. Well, it is. It's been in, it's been in the freezer and in the fridge. Oh, but the essence. Oh, amazing! Right, that smells divine. Real sweet tropical fruits, mango, bit of passion fruit. Definite sweetness of the orange, maybe a bit peachy as well. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. Maybe a bit of melt, like watermelon. Right, we're going to dive in there. So I'm going to bottoms up and down the hatch. Beautiful. Oh, it's amazing. That is like. Look at me, I'm waltzing. And that's kind of what you want to do with this beer. Apologies for the light going back and forth. But it's like, oh, it's just romantic. It's serenading you. It's taking you and going, oh, check me out. But bearing in mind I'm 8%, so I only do it a little bit at a time. Hence the waltz. It's not a quick step. It's not a drink to, to neck. I can't believe the channel called The Hop House, where I like house music, I've just referenced ballroom dancing. Take that what you will. That is, that is probably one of the best salt beer factory beers I've had. Oh. Probably one of the best New England IPAs I've had actually. 
Well, it's a double New England IPA, isn't it? It's 8%. But it's got everything about it. The looks, the murkiness, the smell, the flavour. Let's do some laser vision. For those that love the lacing. So, we're going to jig it around in the glass and you're going to see how it sort of swirls and jigs. Look at that. Looks absolutely superb. I'm trying to hold it up so you can see it where it's best to see it without this light flickering back and forth. And then when I turn it, yeah, the head's still quite minor, but it's really reacting well. We can see the bubbles rise up chasing the bottom of the head. The little magic trick, as I call it. I have to call it that on so many videos. Regular viewers will be thinking, well, get on with it, Ed. Get on with it, lad. Waltz around your kitchen. Being serenaded. Right, enough of that. Flavours. The mouthfeel is ridiculous. That's probably one of the nicest, smoothest, gentle, silky smooth, if you like, mouthfeel and body I've had on a New England IPA. But it's up there in the ABV, it's 8%. It was really like the ICAT or ECAT that they put out into Tesco. That was a double, was that a double dry hopped Nipah or something. But it was about 8% around about that. But this just feels a little bit gentler. Well, I haven't had the eye cap for a while. It's it's worth spending three pound fifty on it. Really is. So yeah, the body's there. It's soft. It's light. It's really friendly in your mouth. It's sort of like I am here, and then we're just gonna take a little journey. In terms of flavors, um, yeah, the the. The hops really work well with the malt, so the malt comes down the middle of the tongue, the hops go down the side, and it's really live. It's got me, me saliva going, it's really got my mouth wanting more. The problem is, is this is 8%, but it don't taste, it doesn't taste strength-wise like it, which means I could probably session a couple of cans of this quite easily, and then I'd be in trouble. But in terms of the, okay, so I spoke about the body, I spoke about how it feels in the mouth, and how light and fluffy and soft and lovely it is. I'm really getting the juiciness in my mouth. It's still there, it's staying there, which is probably quite different from a New England IPA. Maybe that's the double side of it. Mm. It is like drinking a really tasty smoothie or a fruit juice. With Well, more a fruit juice. Smoothie, you get the bits in, wouldn't you? You know, the little seeds and things like that. There's none of that here, of course. Although there is some sediment there, but it's not seedy like. Ooh, seedy. Yeah, mango, orange, bit of peach, watermelon, tiny little bit of watermelon at the back end. It kind of goes with the sweetness, a little bit of tartness. Um, would I say grapefruit? Passion fruit, mango, um, sweet orange, more lemony lime. It all really goes together. It's just a really nice blend, but it's not. It's not like a forced blend. Some beers I've had recently, and I think it's the ones where they say they they add citrus to it or they add certain flavors to it, where you know it's sort of. It's almost like they've injected something into it, will make it taste. And it comes across as synthetic, it comes across as artificial. Whereas this is just a journey in your mouth. It's just there. And then at the back end, it's really it's like a it's like an aftertaste of a fruit juice. It's tart, it's fresh, it's oh. Oh. It's such a shit well. It, it's not such a shame, but in, in my mind, it's such a shame that that is 8%, because otherwise I would drink a shit ton of that. Tram, double Nipa, Salt Beer Factory. Let's see what it says on it. So it, usually on these uh, salt cans, it'll have a little thing on the side that's a bit gimmicky. Not gimmicky, but it's, I, not, I don't use the word gimmicky like it's, you know, but it's, it's what they put on their cans, it's their sort of branding. So it says Tram, noun, number one, 
a low twist ply silk yarn formed by combining two to three single strands. Number two, a double New England IPA, hazy, juicy, and packed full of tropical and stone fruit aromas. So that's how they brand their stuff. Like I say, where salt beer factory is, it used to be a textile factory, big textile area, Saltaire, West Yorkshire, just above Bradford, near Shipley and Bingley. I've heard of Bradford and Bingley Building Society. Well, I have, because I'm from Yorkshire. Uh, there's also a spill there on, on the can about standing on the shoulder of giants, and it shows you what it used to be where salt beer factory is uh so yeah they they really do go big on the textile part of it because that's their heritage and they're owned by osset brewery which are also an amazing company if you ever see any osset brewery real ales bottled beers get some buy some they're tremendous right rating that is so good despite the abv because as i said i'm a session drinker I already feel like it's going to my head a bit. Uh, so I like my four and a half to five, five and a half maybe beers, six percent at a push towards the end of the night. So that is one that I would maybe drink. Well, if I drank more than one or two cans, I'd be in trouble. But it's so drinkable, it hides the ABV really well that I, knowing me. I could see me buying four cans of that and going, yeah, let's try it. And then I'd wake up in a ditch. Um, two thumbs up and a foot. Can't get a foot in there physically, but you get the idea. Two thumbs up and a foot. It is a really highly rated beer. The, the smell, the appearance is great. The smell is phenomenal. The mouthfeel and the flavour and the aftertaste. And it's still there in my mouth. I feel like I've had two of me five a day. Beautiful. Go get some, three three pound fifty in Morrison's. And it's still available now, Tram. You won't regret it. That is proper craft beer, I think. Now, bearing in mind I've had stuff from Daya. I think that's probably about as crafty as I've gone, isn't it? I've had some like local um, breweries around here, Salopian, Salopian do some really good stuff. I think that can go up against the Daya beer, personally. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you again for another beer review here on the Hop House. Ciao for now, people. I'm about to lie down now. Huh?